It just happened at exactly 10.02 a.m. Eastern Time this morning, December 19th, the interstellar comet 3I Atlas reached its closest point to Earth. After five months of tracking this visitor from another star system, we finally got our best look and the observations scientists captured today are revealing things we didn't expect. Before we go any further, I'd love to know where you're watching from, especially as this historic moment has just passed. Drop a comment with your location. It's always fascinating to hear from viewers around the world during events like this. Now, let's talk about what actually happened during closest approach and what scientists observed. At 6.02 a.m., UTC Today, December 19th, 3i Atlas reached perigee, the technical term for its closest approach to Earth. The exact distance was 26,937,114 kilometers or about 167 million miles. To put that in perspective, that's nearly twice the distance between Earth and the Sun. At the time, the comet was positioned in the constellation Leo near the bright star Regulus. Observers in the Northern Hemisphere had their viewing window during the pre-dawn hours looking east to northeast. What makes this moment so significant is that it marked the peak opportunity for ground-based telescopes and space observatories to collect data. From here on, the comet is moving away from both Earth and the Sun. With each passing day, it becomes dimmer and more difficult to study. Multiple observatories coordinated their observations for this narrow window. The Virtual Telescope Project in Italy hosted a live stream starting at 11 p.m. Eastern on December 18th. Weather conditions were challenging, but they still managed to capture the comet moving against the background stars. NASA's eyes on the solar system tracking tool showed the distance counter hitting its minimum value at exactly the predicted time. The orbital calculations held up perfectly. No surprises in the trajectory during closest approach. So, what did scientists actually observe during this closest approach window? First, the coma structure, the cloud of gas and dust surrounding the comet's nucleus. Recent observations from Gemini North on November 26th had shown the comet glowing green due to emissions from diatomic carbon. Scientists wanted to know whether that color persisted or changed. Early reports suggest the green glow is still present, though analyzing the full data set will take days or even weeks. That color provides key clues about which molecules are actively sublimating from the comet's surface. Second, the anti-tail feature. This has been one of the most discussed aspects of 3i Atlas. Images taken by Thai astronomer Tizak Talawang on December 13th showed a prominent structure pointing toward the sun, something that's unusual for comets. Dr. Avi Liu from Harvard published an analysis suggesting this anti-tail could consist of ice fragments shedding from the sun-facing side of the comet. These tiny particles evaporate before solar radiation pressure can push them away, creating the appearance of material moving toward the sun. The closest approach observations should help confirm whether this feature is still present and how it has evolved since perihelion back in October. Third, brightness measurements. The comet was expected to remain around magnitude 11.0, which requires at least a 30 centimeters telescope to observe visually. Professional observatories closely tracked any changes that might indicate sudden outbursts or shifts in activity. While ground-based telescopes were essential, spacecraft provided perspectives that Earth-based observers simply can't match. NASA's Europa Clipper, currently on its way to Jupiter's moon, Europa, observed 3 Atlas on November 6 using its ultraviolet spectrograph. Those images were released publicly yesterday, December 18, showing the comet as a faint pale blue blob. The timing mattered. Europa Clipper observed the comet when it wasn't well positioned for Earth-based or Mars-orbiting observatories, helping fill a critical gap in the observation timeline. ESAS Juice spacecraft, also en route to Jupiter, observed 3 Atlas in early November, shortly after Perry Helen. Due to transmission limitations, the full science data from JUICE won't reach Earth until February 2026. However, preliminary images already show clear signs of activity with hints of two tails extending from the nucleus. 
Together, these spacecraft observations complement today's closest approach data by offering different viewing angles and wavelengths that ground telescopes can't access. One of the most intriguing aspects scientists are studying is three atlases' unusual chemical composition. Earlier observations revealed extremely high levels of carbon dioxide compared to water with a ratio of roughly 8 to 1. That's rare. Most comets in our solar system contain far more water than CO2. The comet is also releasing significant amounts of hydrogen, cyanide, and methanol, both considered prebiotic molecules or building blocks that could contribute to the chemistry needed for life. X-ray observations from ESASXM and Newton and Japan's RISM spacecraft in late November and early December detected an extended halo around the comet stretching nearly 400,000 kilometers. This X-ray emission results from interactions between the comet's gases and the solar wind. What's especially interesting is that X-rays can reveal gases like hydrogen and nitrogen, which are nearly invisible to optical telescopes. The timing of closest approach gives researchers their best chance to correlate X-ray, optical, and infrared data into a single complete picture of the comet's composition. The anti-tail pointing toward the sun remains one of the most debated features of 3 Atlas. Dr. Liu has now published three scientific papers attempting to explain this phenomenon. 